Hi, in case you think I've been neglecting the watercolours, which I have for the last month, um, <coughs> I've uh, just dug this one out. It's of uh, the uh, Seven Islands small lake on uh, Mitcham Common, near to where I live. I'll just show you quite close. It would take too long to edit this into the, into the video, so I, this is the way I do it. Um, so we've got a, a blue sky. I took this photograph several, quite a few weeks ago, early spring, um, before the leaves were really on the trees. There's just a, you see just a little bit of um, green showing on here, and these silver birches here. Um, it's like a, a, a spit of land sticking out into the lake, blue going across here. Um, so. I'll uh, wet the paper. Now I'm working more or less vertical, so I haven't. Uh, <coughs> I do. I, I wouldn't normally work like this for a watercolour. It's far too steep. But by wetting the paper first, at least the colour sticks. So just give it a give it a nice wet, and as it expands then we can uh, re-clip it now. Nice, nice sky. Uh, my palette is uh, lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, Payne's grey and burnt sienna. I like burnt sienna, that's my eight colours. You don't have to use them all. So we'll just warm the sky, the sky up a bit. You can mix a bit of red in, in with that. Let's get that in there. Do the water at the same time. And we'll uh, put a bit of blue in there now. I'm using the hake, the two-inch hake. Ah, it's got some dirt in it. It's probably come from my water jug that's got bits of acrylic stuck to it. I don't want too much water on the brush now because there's plenty on the. Uh, Plenty on the on the paper, but we're reflecting the the sky here. So you want your darkest blue on the bottom. There's quite a lot of water on that. So we we'll, we we'll put in a bit of uh, cloud. We'll have a, a bit of the alizarin mixed with the blue. It's just a nice streaky sky. Okay, we'll let that go. I'll just take the water off the, off the bottom. I've lost the brush, it's probably fallen on the floor. Um, um, I'm just going to use the hake and the, and the rigger as far as I can. Uh, let's just take that off the bottom there. Actually, this is just a little bit too high. But anyway, right now, as that's drying in, I'm going to put in some background and I'm going to use some blue, some alizarin, a little bit of raw sienna. Just put in some split so let's just bring it together again it needs to be a little bit uh, harder in there because otherwise it won't show Okay, now we can get some darker bit of green in there, so lemon yellow, plenty of yellow. I 
and some Payne's Grey. You can use uh, raw uh, burnt sienna if you wish. Now I haven't used these colours for quite a while, so. so to put some colour in on that. These sort of, they're not islands, I don't think they are. Yeah, they are. Bits of island. So I just want to put some warm colours in here. Get some good good darks in there now. Payne's grey, bit of burnt sienna. Now while that's wet I can just flick in with a card if I can find a bit of card. I've got a lot of stuff all over the place in my other easel. Put in some reflection in that. Need some bank there. Put in a bit of blue. And then we'll just scrape in some uh, more or less underneath where I'll put these other bits in there just. Okay, well, we can let that go for a minute. I'm just going to reclip the paper and then I'm going to uh, put in that so near bank. And then we'll do the trees. All right, okay, so a bit of um, burnt umber, I think. A bit of burnt umber and a bit of, bit of grey, but you just put it in fairly faint. And we can vary the uh, colours of this bit of sienna. Oops. And that comes out here. This comes sort of back round in itself here. Okay. I'm going to let that stand for a minute. I'll pop them just a little bit of a. Um, I'll give that a bit of a 
bit of a dry. We've got a bit of an oasis here, or a bit of a tide map. Never mind. <coughs> Let's uh, put in the uh, paint grey and a bit of sienna, burnt sienna that is. And that's quite dark this one here, so let's just put in uh, this one here. One going up here. Oh. I'll use a rigger on some of these, and these are these are lighter ones. So I'll put those in, these ones in burnt umber and a bit of blue, and then. That one here, a bit bluer. I'm going to anchor these into the into the land. Can't put them all in, and then we've got a darker one in the background there. So put that in here. There's a bit of a hedge in there, There's not a hedge, but a, lots of uh, bits of stuff. Right, now with my rigger, I'm going to put in some some dark, so use some uh, black or paint grey. There's lots of tangled uh, undergrowth here. Fairly dry. Right, now I'll, that, that's as far as I'm going to take that for a minute. Uh, let's uh, put a canopy in, so paint's grey. Bit of sienna. So we can put in some over the back there, put those slightly blue. There's some sticking up here. Bring that a bit higher there just to disguise that cauliflower. Uh, that'll do. Clean my brush. And now we'll go in with the uh, Some of this. Yeah. 
Try and keep this as simple as possible. That is quite dark, that's sort of more silhouetted. They have that. Look at those ends coming into, into here. There's not a lot of this. Well, uh, I'll go put some reflections of the sky back in there. This is the uh, just the grasses and. A general uh, melee of uh, we can have a bit of a shadow in there. Let's go. I haven't forgotten the sky. I... Okay, give that a dry. Be wet. Be very careful when you put wet on the already dry painting. If you scrub, you will move the paint. Right, let's go back with with some colour and darker blue here. It's going to fit a little bit. That'll probably be uh, cauliflower there. But I wanted to show uh, some of that, but if you put it in a bit darkish. Right, it doesn't look very, very strong, but I don't know if I can get some of this in here. But we'll make this a bit stronger. Right, I need to put in some. Uh, some darker, warmer, umbery, paints grey. Come back here, let's just 
strengthen that up a little bit. I was just using the edge of the uh, of the rigger just to put some texture, you can put some reflection in there. Right, I'm going to sign that. I think we could have put a little bird. Ah, look. No right, I'll put it in a <coughs> in a mount. Let's do a bit of a masking tape first. We'll find, find some. And then we'll we'll have a look of I could probably put it in uh, two different mounts. Take that off. There with me. Right, I'll put it in the blue mount first. Oops. Okay, so there's so that's one. That doesn't look too bad. And if I put it in the other mount, you're getting a little bit battered now. I need to take that up just a little bit. Right, well there we are. Let's just do that a little bit. No, it's not going to work, is it? I'm used to this, am I? I've got how to do it. Right, so I don't know whether it looks better in that one or, or what. That's, we can double mount it. Well, you, you choose. Um, it's just a little bit bit weaker than I'd I'd hoped, but um, anyway, it's still a nice little painting, a little watercolour of seven islands. Let's go into it, and you can have a have a look around. What I've done. Let's do the foreground. You could do all that texturing with the, with the edge of a rigger, but when the paint's dry, you're just dragging the paint upwards. I haven't overdone the twigs in the uh, old branches. That's my background. It looks effective because I haven't laboured it, I've just suggested. I've just made suggestions. I haven't done any portraits of anything. It's just a suggestion of something there, and then your brain will connect the dots, if you understand that. I'll just move that over just a little bit. There, there. that's better. Because then we can see that, that tree there. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.